Welcome back YouTube. In this video, I'll be discussing how to connect the BME280 to the Xiao RP2040, which is a newly popular, very powerful microcontroller that the community has been using a lot. And this is a compact and low cost development board that includes the RP2040 chip, which is a very popular chip famously used on the Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W models. And this also includes a USB port for programming, debugging, reset button, and a number of GPIO pins for connecting to external sensors, actuators, and other devices. So it's really easy design to be used for hobbyists with a wide range of applications and projects to even commercial projects as well. And so the BME sensor we have here is the BME280, which is also a digital uh, sensor that combines temperature, humidity, and pressure sensing in a single small package. So it is designed for use in a variety of applications, especially weather monitoring, indoor air quality, and even navigation such as altitude. And the BME280 sensor uses advanced MEMS technology to measure the three environmental variables with high accuracy and stability. So in order to get them connected, first of all, you will need a soldered version, or you can solder it yourself of the Xiao RP2040. You can buy the soldered version off Amazon, which I'll link down in the description below. But other than that, you will need four jumper wires, so you can buy those off of any, any Amazon link. That's a very common thing you need to work with electronics when it comes to microcontrollers. And you will also need a soldered version of the BME280. You can solder that yourself, or you can buy it uh, pre-soldered. I will also link the pre-soldered one in the description below. And of course, finally, you will need a power cord for the Xiao RP2040 to power the device and the BME280. So once you have all those things, you just wanna make the connections as follows on this diagram. Four connections here, very simple because it is I2C communication. So you will just need two for the SCL, SDA, as you can see on the right here, and two for a VCC and ground. So once you have that going, let's jump into the code and talk about that a little more. So in order to get started with this device, we're going to be using MicroPython with the Thani IDE. So you can simply download the Thani IDE by going to thani.org and downloading it. It's free, open source, and easy to use. And once you have that, what you want to do is go ahead and plug in your device to the power supply. But before you go ahead and plug into the power supply, make sure you are holding the boot cell button, which is the bottom here. It's a very small button on this device. It's often hard to see. And make sure you're holding that button as you plug in so you can mount the device onto your computer to, to prepare it for the MicroPython driver. So you have to hold this button in order to get MicroPython onto the device. So I'm going to do that off the screen here to mount this onto the, the computer so I can get the MicroPython driver on the device. So I'm plugging it in and holding the button at the same time. And then once that happens, what you want to do is you want to go to tools and then you want to go to options here. And then we want to go to the interpreter. We're going to choose Raspberry Pi Pico. We want the MicroPython version for Raspberry Pi Pico. That's fine. And we can just click install or update. We can see that the volume is not there. So let's go ahead and hold the boot cell button again and unplug it and replug it. Let's do that again. I don't think I held it right. Okay, so let's do that again. It should show up. There we go. So once we have that, we just make sure to select it. And then we want to select the MicroPython variant. So I'm just going to say Raspberry Pi Pico. That should be fine for the sake of this video. And we're just going to do install. So give that a moment there, and then once that's done, I'll show you what to do in terms of the BME280 library to get started with that. Okay, so now that you have the package installed and you have all your connections and your device is powered, the next thing you want to do is go and take the sample code that I have and run it on your device. You can put it in any file you like here. I just call it the file bme280test.py. It is a very simple file, and make sure you are connected to your device down here below as well. So I selected it down there. And also the next thing you want to do is in order to even run the file, you actually need the BME280 library, which thankfully Thani makes it very easy for us to install this package. So we can just go to manage packages here and search BME280. And then we can just go MicroPython BME280 and install. It should install within a matter of seconds. So it's a very small package. And once we have that, we pretty much have everything we need. If your connections are exactly as the ones I showed in the diagram, this code should run by creating an I squared C object and passing it to the BME280 library and we are printing the value every second. So we're gonna get three values. We're gonna get temperature, pressure, and humidity in percents. So if I go ahead and run that, you can see that it does give me those values every second. Of course, you can play with this interval and you could do many other things such as convert the values to eventually altitude. I have another video of that, I'll link that right here where you can convert the pressure values to altitude using the CircuitPython library. So you can actually get CircuitPython on this, on this device as well. That's for another video. 
But overall, I hope you got the gist of getting values from the BME 280 sensor with the Xiao RP2040. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I made your life easier. If I did, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, you know what I say. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.